Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode 8, the final episode, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking about libraries or modules, as they're called in Python. And we're also going to be talking about comments, which maybe I should have talked about at the beginning of the series, but whatever, I'm getting to it now. Okay, so a library, just in general, the general concept of a library, is a collection of classes and functions that can generally be used in roughly any project that you're working with, of course, given the correct licensing and whatnot. Now, libraries generally have uh, different names depending on what programming language you're using. For example, uh, in Java, I'm pretty sure they're actually called packages over there. And, uh, of course, in C++, they're called libraries. And in Mo or, uh, Python, they're called modules. So they go by a whole bunch of different names. And today, we're going to be looking at libraries in C++ and then modules in Python uh, and the kind of differences between the two. Okay, so let's start with C++, and actually, as it were, we have already used libraries in C++ uh, throughout this entire series. You remember the uh, hash include IO stream, and often the hash include string that we've been putting at the top of our C++ programs? These are actually importing or including uh, some libraries from the C++ kind of standard set of libraries, but these IOStream and String are libraries. Without these, we wouldn't be able to do really most things in C++. Now, what this hash include kind of uh, statement does is it actually pretty much takes the uh, library file that you define, in this case String, which is uh, just a C++ uh, internal file, it takes the file for this library and pretty much just copies it into yours uh, and that executes all of the uh, function declarations and all the class declarations uh, so that all the classes and functions and methods and whatnot are available to you in your uh, C++ code. So a library is basically just another C++ uh, application or a C++ source file. So we can actually make a C++ application or a C++ library rather um, just by writing a normal application. So let's just do that. So instead of including IO stream or string here, I'm just going to jump right into the using namespace uh, STD. And then I'm going to create a function. In this case, I'm just going to make an integer function that doubles uh, whatever you uh, give it as a uh, argument. But instead of naming it double, I'm just going to name it taco just so that we know that it's this function. And uh, as a parameter, we're going to take an integer and we're just going to name that um, banana. Why not? And then inside of this function, we're just going to return banana times two. And that's going to be our entire function. So let's go ahead and save this out. And we're just going to call this our library.cpp just library.cpp. Now we're going to open up a new file here and we're going to do hash include first we're going to do io stream and then we're going to do hash include and then in quotes we're going to do library.cpp. We're just going to do the using namespace namespace std and then inside of our main function here we're going to do a cout on banana banana uh, and we'll give it a value of 4. Why not? So we should get 8 out of that. So we're going to go ahead and return 0. And then in our programming here, I'm going to name this as libraries.cpp. Now when I compile, I just do libraries.cpp and let's call it libraries. Oh yeah, I guess it would, uh, guess it would help if I actually called taco instead of banana. Also, I need to put this std C++, oops, C++11, that needs a second one of those. My bad. But okay, if we go ahead and compile that, then it compiles correctly, uh, because I forgot the function name was taco and the parameter is named banana. This is why you're supposed to give your variables meaningful names, otherwise you do that. But let's go ahead and run that, and you can see that we get the value of 8, which is what we expected because we gave our function named taco, which just doubles our number. We gave it the number 4, and it did 4 times 2 and returned it to us, and then we just see out. So that is how a, a function uh, library, rather, uh, kind of works in C++. Now, 
in C++ you also have what is known as a header file. Now a header file uh, basically just gives a bunch of what are known as uh, function prototypes which are kind of like uh, initializing a variable, or not initializing but declaring a variable like int x. You could call this a prototype of the uh, variable x. That's basically what a, a function prototype is. It's declaring the function uh, without actually giving it a body. But a header file in C++ uh, basically is just full of uh, function prototypes that you can use, and then it pulls in the CPP file. So let's go ahead and just make this up. Uh, we're going to make a new file here. And what we're going to need to do is include our library.cpp. CPP, and then we'll just put in our uh, function prototype here, so int taco. And then you don't actually have to give the name of the parameter, you just have to give the type. This is what's known as a signature. It has the uh, return type, the name, and then any types of parameters. So we just do that, and then we're going to do, in here we're going to do library.h for our header file. And then inside of our libraries.cpp, we can just include library.h. Compile that out, and you can see it works the same way. This is generally what people do uh, to keep everything kind of organized with a bunch of uh, function prototypes. Now you may have noticed the difference between these uh, pointy brackets and using quotes. Quotes are used if you are imp or including a local file. If it is in, say, the same directory, or even if it's in a subdirectory, we can do like subdir slash library.h. That's what the quotes are for. It's if they are locally available um, with, if you ship an application, uh, or the source code rather, um, then it will be relative to the source code. So that is if it's, if it's locally available. The uh, pointy brackets here are for uh, libraries that are in the C++ kind of set of libraries. So, uh, and you'll see that they don't have a uh, file extension as well like these do. Okay, so in Python, uh, libraries are very, very similar, except you just don't have a header file. But in Python, of course, they're known as modules. So uh, in order to import a module, what you would do is you would just do import, and then one common module is time. You can also import like stuff like OS or Sys. Now you will note, whenever I import OS and Sys, these are two completely different modules, but I'm importing them on one line using a comma. Uh, so that's kind of one way that you can keep everything on one line. Now generally this is not the best form, um, but it does work, and if you have a bunch of modules that are just very similar, and you want to all import them at once, then you can do it that way. Now, whenever you import a module, what you must do in order to uh, run a, a function or call a function from a module is you have to do the name of the module, so in this, t uh, in this case, time. I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of these. And then you're going to do the function name. So in this case, uh, there's a function inside of time uh, called sleep that basically just pauses for uh, however long uh, you want it to. So in this case, I'm giving it three, so it will pause for three seconds. So I'm going to uh, save this out, libraries.py. I'm going to put that in my programming folder here. And now whenever I run this, you can see that it pauses for three seconds, and then it finishes. So that is how you would use uh, a function uh, inside of a module in Python. Now, let's say I only wanted to have the sleep uh, function uh, from the time module, and I didn't want to import all of time. What I could do is I could do from, and then the name of the module, so in this case time, import sleep. Now what this does is it actually makes it so I don't need to have this time dot here. So I can just do sleep, and then run Python, and then it will uh, do the exact same thing, um, but I only imported the sleep function from the module of time. Now one thing to note about Python uh, modules is that whenever you import a Python module, it actually runs the entire script of what you have imported. So in Python, generally what people will do is use what's known as a main function, like we do, uh, like we have here in uh, C++, we have this int main. People will do that in Python. So generally what people will do is def main, 
and then they'll have whatever in here passes just a, a keyword that says do nothing. And then down here, uh, at the very bottom, they'll have if name equals, and then I believe it is underscore underscore main, then do main. And I don't need a semicolon there. And then I'll just print out uh, cats right here. And then you can see that runs it this way, but if I were to import my libraries.py file as a module, uh, then it won't run this. Uh, but if I didn't have it, then it would run that, and it, that could cause a lot of issues. Finally, to make a, a library in Python, all you really have to do is just open up a Python file and just go at it. Start typing some uh, functions here. So we're going to do, uh, what, what did we name it? Taco. Banana. We're going to do the, the exact same thing uh, as we did in C++. We're just going to do banana times 2. We're going to save this out as library.py in our programming folder. And then in our libraries.py file here that we're using to execute, what we would do in order to get all of our, our functions and whatnot from this file is we would actually just type the file name without the file extension. So we can just do library. And then I guess it would actually probably help if I use that. So let's do uh, library.taco and we'll give it three this time and you can see that it gives us our value of six so that's how you use modules inside of Python finally I want to talk about comments so a comment is basically a block of text in your source code that the computer completely ignores they are specifically for people it improves the readability and it kind of gets rid of the what are you doing in this code factor so it's highly encouraged to use functions or functions comments in your code now there are two kinds of comments there are multi-line comments and there are single line comments and they are pretty much exactly what you would think they are so looking at the C++ side of things we can make a, a single line comment with two forward slashes now you can see in genie it turned the text red in most IDEs it will maybe turn it gray usually and then we can just type whatever so um, cats are cool and you can see all of that text is red because it's saying that the compiler will completely ignore that text so if we were to compile that you can see it doesn't give us any problems because it doesn't pay any mind to this to do a multi-line comment in C++ you would start it with a forward slash and a asterisk here and then you could come down and you can see that Genie automatically gives us extra asterisks and then to close it off we just use a an asterisk and a forward slash like that so I'm actually gonna pull that back like that and then I can say cats are cool but dogs are cooler and just like before uh, the compiler doesn't care at all about that in Python single line comments start with a hash like this so I can do hash again cats are cool and Python will not care at all now to do a multi-line comment in Python you would just do a triple slat or a triple a triple quote and then you would close it off with another triple quote that's three uh, double quotes in a row and then you know cats are cool cool but dogs are cooler 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 there we go and then just like before Python still doesn't care and that's pretty much it and at that we conclude our series on a hands-on introduction to computer programming you now know pretty much everything that you need to know in order to create some small programs or even some larger programs uh, so thank you guys for watching uh, I've really enjoyed making this series and uh, I hope to make some future tutorial series or some build logs of something or whatever in the future um, but now you guys can understand my mindless ramblings a little bit better so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video peace